It's been 10 years since the debut of James Wan's The Conjuring, and while entire cinematic universes have begun and ended in that time, sometimes after one movie, the Conjuring verse is still going strong. The fourth Conjuring movie has been announced, The Nun 2 is hitting this fall, and Warner Brothers recently revealed that a Conjuring TV show is in development and coming to max. Give us a sign that you want to communicate with us. And with a decade of strong, well-paced world building at its back, The Conjuring has everything it needs to possess your undivided attention from the comfort of your definitely not haunted home. The title of the next Conjuring movie is a big indicator that there is a sea change coming for the franchise. The Conjuring Last Rites may be a reference to the prayer a priest says for the dying, but it has a real sense of finality to it in the context of Ed and Lorraine Warren, the paranormal investigators whose marriage is the foundation of every main Conjuring movie. Ed's declining health was a big plot point in the third movie, and even though the real Ed Warren lived into the 21st century, the filmmakers have never had much interest in sticking too closely to the true events that inspire the movies. James Wan even hinted before the title was announced that the fourth Conjuring movie could be the end. So if Last Rites is potentially the last time we'll see Ed and Lorraine together, the franchise needs other story threads and ideas baked into the series to flesh out. It's a good thing they've been quietly setting the table for that since the very beginning. The first Conjuring movie established two paradigms that have paid off big time. The runaway popularity of the possessed Annabelle doll from the opening scene have proven that introducing villains in the Conjuring movies is an effective way of setting up satellite series that can weave in and out of each other. A great example of that, Valak the Demon Nun from The Conjuring 2, who's about to return in The Nun 2, which in case you're keeping track, is a sequel to a prequel to a sequel. The second crucial piece of world building, the Warren's Relic Room, where they keep haunted artifacts. Don't touch it. Don't light any matches in the Warren's house because it is absolutely doused in spin-off fuel. The third Annabelle movie, Annabelle Comes Home, centers around the Warren's Relic Room going a bit haywire. And even though all ends well, it begs the question, what if someone came in and stole all that stuff? <laughs> Be a pretty good setup for a TV show. The third Annabelle also establishes Judy Warren, Ed and Lorraine's daughter, as having the same medium abilities as her mother. If Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson decide to move on from their leading roles in the main movies, McKenna Grace could be well positioned to carry on the torch in the TV show. In any case, it's clear that we have plenty of conjuring in our future. And in an age where some companies are going overboard trying to connect movies and TV shows together, The Conjuring and Max seem like a match made in hell. What is this? It's the reason you're here. Yes, the Conjuring universe is coming to max, and with all the haunted crap littering that franchise, the possibilities for where it could go are endless. Here to talk to me about that are Amelia Emberwing, Tom Jorgensen, and Max Scoville. Hey guys, Hi. thanks for joining me. Hi. So first things first, get right into it. Is a Conjuring TV series even a good idea, or would you rather them focus on theatrically released movies? Oh, I think a Conjuring TV show is a great idea. There are so many untapped, spooky things in this franchise that either had its own spinoff and then it got canceled or that hasn't even been touched upon yet that a TV show would give the full opportunity to just go ham on all of them. Yeah, it's it's the only other sort of analog that I can think of in modern day is, is the Chucky TV series, which just proved that you can move horror from screen to small screen. And, and have that translation be not only good for the overall franchise, but also just like telling more personal stories, doing more interesting things with uh, the gimmick of Talking Doll in that case, Talking Doll in this franchise too. So, you know, uh, I think Chucky might be a little upset that Annabelle's coming into his territory, but good I think point. it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. We've also seen a lot of success with just sort of bespoke TV horror or streaming horror, like the Mike Flanagan stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's interesting because you can have, you know, season long, long form stories. We were sort of talking about this before we went live. The other option is to do something more anthology focused and doing the old kind of, you know, Twilight Zone, Outer Limits approach and letting, letting different 
different people tell different stories and you know, maybe you do lives. six episodes for each relic. You know, maybe we kind of build that out. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that kind of leads into my next question. I mean, they've built out this whole universe. Should it even stay focused on the Warren family? So I actually think it shouldn't. Yeah. Um, or if it does, like, I think it should come later. Mm -hmm. Like, the, it gives us a good opportunity to expand, expand beyond without being attached to Ed and Lorraine especially if that last one is, is indeed going to be that last one. Right. You could even see them adopting the structure of the first Conjuring movie across a season of TV. And if you remember that first Conjuring movie, it's, it's uh, you know, the Perrin family is, is dealing with all this supernatural stuff. Ed and Lorraine kind of get woven into that, but we spend a ton of time with that, the Perrin family in The Conjuring. Mm -hmm. So you could also see them being, you know, finally at the end of the season, it's gotten bad enough that we need to bring a Warren in here, whether that's Judy Warren, or maybe Ed, and Ed is still alive, who knows, but yeah. yeah. I mean, I'd love if they took sort of the Fargo approach where you have like really, really like very slight threads between things that connect them. And like yeah. maybe you bring in the Warrens in some capacity, but like it's, again, the, the first Conjuring has that really, really slow burn to it that kind of, it's a lot of buildup. It's great, it's wonderful. It really gets that, in that kind of classic sort of exorcist approach, you get to know the family. Like you get to understand the stakes before they get really weird. And I feel like you can, you can have a great time with that in the long form of a, of a series like that. And I don't know, where the Warrens come in is a, that's a good question. But yeah. I mean, what is, like, what is a Conjuring movie? Like by, by definition, aside from the Warrens side of things, like what has to be there aside from spooky stuff? To this yeah. point, it's Ed and Lorraine Warren. Their relationship is this thing that sets it apart from every other horror franchise going where it is these two characters at the heart and, and we're so focused on them. It's kind of why you get invested in a lot of the horror because you end up really caring about what's going on with them. And so. I think, I think it's exactly what you said, but zooming even, even further out, like it's, it doesn't always have to be Ed and Lorraine. It has to be love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That love has to be centered in that. Like the, the moment in Conjuring 2 where he's playing the song and the, the kids are watching and she's watching, it is just such a beautiful, seen across all of cinema not just not just horror but like it is it is so touching and it connects you to them so perfectly that when we see them later in 3 when you're worried that Ed could die you are devastated and it has nothing to do with the horror you're just like I could lose him oh no yeah, and their chemistry is just incredible. It's like, it, incredible. I ship them so hard. Yeah. It's the, the TV insane. show will need a version of yeah. that for yes. sure. Yeah, and Amelia and Tom, I know you guys are huge fans of the Conjuring universe, but Max, I'm going to have to call you out just a little bit. As far as I'm aware, you're a bit of a lapsed fan at this point. Fair, fair weather Conjuring. I, a fair weather? They could do some stuff to conjure up some, you know, some some fandom in me. Conjure just, up. You know, <laughs> some kind of ritual to Did you summon write the, that? Do you have I was going to, no. I have the card. <laughs> Well, to that to that point, what would a Conjuring TV series have to conjure up to get Max Goville back on board? Man, I really I would love it if they did the the kind of the the bite-sized trail of breadcrumbs approach. Like I'd love it if it was if it was sort of standalone episodes, like an anthology approach, mm -hmm. do the Black Mirror thing, you know, because there is so much water cooler stuff around that, and it's a really kind of good kind of point of interest or point of access where if there's if there's one just banger episode that get gets people talking then it kind of like it pulls you in it leads you in there and if it's if it's all sort of you know d distantly interconnected across this you know, weird junk room full of horrible dolls and mirrors and crap like that's that you know it's a it's a web it, that that's how it kind of sucks you in but uh yeah. you know you've you've already got the diehards hooked you know there's there's plenty of people who are going to tune in yes or yes to a show that says conjuring on it or is somehow connecting to the conjuring verse but i think you know some some more little I don't know, interesting new ways of kind of approaching that, that universe from a new angle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as we've seen, it's gotten a little, you know, it's gotten a little wacky with the timelines, you know, like you were saying, Tom, there was prequels and pre-sequels and all that. Should the Conjuring series ever make it to present day? See, that's a good question because so much of, uh, when we go back to the identity of what these movies are, they are also period pieces for the most part. I think the farthest into, uh, I think they're in the 80s now in the mainline Conjuring movies and that's as far as we've gotten. I do think there's room for it to move to live, or I'm sorry, live action, move to modern day. Um, and, and, you know, again, like if Judy Warren was to be the lead, you could very easily see it maybe being an adult Judy Warren and, and, and we catch up with her because I think she'd be about 40 or 50 uh, in modern day, according to the timeline, so. Mm -hmm. Can we get the, the sort of Wes Craven's new nightmare approach? 
where like it's a conjuring universe within the conjuring universe and they've adapted the Warren stories into movies, but they're slightly different from the ones we've actually gotten. Just slightly different. You know, the actual house from the conjuring is like an Airbnb now and people are, you know, <laughs> it's people are running it out because it was in the movie that was in the movie and Listen, in 2023, anything goes with these IP, let me tell you. <laughs> but switching gears a little bit, who, what, who would you guys like to see work on the Conjuring TV series? Flanagan. Yeah. Flanagan. I was going to say Flanagan because you brought up Flanagan earlier and I was like, that's good. Yeah. Like, it's got to be Flanagan because there are so few people that can hit that love aspect in the way that Juan and Flanagan do. And I want to see a long form Flanagan approach to developing and showcasing that love. Like the, the scare in, it's the scare in Haunting of Hill House is a perfect example of, of how that love increases that terror. Like that scene isn't terrifying because of the jump scare. It's terrifying because you are so engaged in their argument that you don't even think a jump scare is a possibility. Like Flanagan understands all of that so deeply and there is nobody better suited to take on a Conjuring TV series. He's got a relationship there out of Dr. Sleep too yeah. with Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers does The Conjuring. So there's at least some connection there. I'd also love to see Jennifer Kent join this universe. Like I think uh, Babadook is such a good example of, of taking these themes of, you know, love, but also also grief as well and she's so masterful with those and I'd love to see that applied to this universe. I mean this is a strong argument for the the you know vignette anthology approach yes. is that maybe maybe you can't down, nail down a director for like a full production feature film but like I don't know get you know Ari Aster on the phone get Jordan Peele on the phone what are they doing do they want to do a you know the, the Warrens have a yard sale what happens next kind is of thing. A, a modern version <laughs> of Masters of Horror that sort yeah, of Yeah I think that I don't know series. I think there's definitely a place for that. No. Well, I'm afraid the Warrens have a yard sale was way too good of an idea, so I have to shut this whole thing down. Um, but we still don't know when the Conjuring series will hit max, but The Nun 2 is coming to theaters on September 8th. There's plenty more from San Diego Comic-Con coming your way. Stick around.